Hey, Shalom, Israel Most High Christ Bless. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captain. I'm Captain Zab. To my left, I have... Soldier Jehu. So today we're going to talk about one of your, your moms, one of your aunties, one of your cousins that's still in the Christian church, one of their favorite scriptures. So if you can, Israel, share this video with them so they can get some clarity on the point that's confusion in Christianity. We want to clear these things up for them. We're going to start here at John chapter 19, verse 30. This is one of them key verses that they constantly confuse on. Come on. John chapter 19, verse 30. Yeah. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. What did Christ say? It is finished. So when he says it is finished, what takes place in the minds of Christianity, right, in our mothers and our cousins and our aunties' minds is that you no longer have to keep the law anymore. That's what it is finished mean. You don't have to do nothing that the Old Testament said to do. You can eat whatever you want to eat. You don't have to keep the Sabbath day. You can celebrate pagan holidays. They know Christmas is wrong. They know Easter is wrong, but they feel like they can still do it. When he said it is finished, that meant they can bring eggs and, and Christmas trees in the house. That's what it meant. No, 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 no mom, no dad, no auntie. That's not what this scripture is talking about. Now, let's look at the definition of finish. We're going to start with that first, because what we tend to do as a people is that we don't look up words. We read things and then we just contextualize whatever we feel in the scripture. Let's look up. Let's look at finish. Let's do definition one and two. Come on. Finished is an adjective. Uh -huh. Ended or completed. So when you finish something, you have ended it or completed it. See, they can read that and say, oh, we finished the law. Go ahead. Number two, completed or perfected in all details. In all what? In all details. See, it was some details that you got to be mindful of when you read in the scriptures. If you're not mindful of the details and Christ said it is finished, you're not going to know what he's talking about. You got to understand the details. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Yep. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Now, if your mom or if, if you are reading this verse, what you would see, right? If you have that, that Bible, you'll see that these, these, uh, this writing is in red writing. So Christ is speaking here. This is the last chapter, the last book of the, Bi last book of the Bible. Read it again. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. So in the last chapter of the last book of the Bible, Christ is still talking about keeping the commandments. Why are you saying you no longer have to keep the commandments? Read it again. Blessed are they that do his commandments, uh -huh. that they may have right to the tree of life. Okay. That they may enter. And they may do what? That they may enter. They can enter. So your passport, your, your ID, your enter to enter. Go ahead. And through the gates into the city. So the way to enter and through the gates of the city is those that keep the commandments. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're not going to have the proper, um, what's the word, references in order to get into the, the kingdom of heaven. You have to keep the commandments. Let's go to this, John chapter 14, verse 15. Again, if you read this in your Bible, you may see red writing right here because Christ is speaking. John 14, 15. Come on. John chapter 14, verse 15. Uh -huh. If ye love me. Keep my commandments. Now, if you love Christ, you would keep his commandments. That's what Christ said out of his own mouth. Let's go to Paul because what, what Christianity does is that they tend to put the writings of Paul in authority over what Christ is saying. Now, we just read clearly where Christ said keep the commandments. Let's see what Paul said. Romans chapter 2 and verse 13. Romans chapter 2 verse 13. Yeah. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, uh -huh. but the doers. But the who? But the doers. So Paul even said the doers, go ahead, of the law shall be justified. So the doers of the law justified again. So Christ has said it twice, and we just read where Paul said it, the doers of the law. Let's go to Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. So what, what happens again, Israel? And, and, and mom, dad, if you're watching this video, like I really want you to understand that what happens is in your Bible, there are little notes and, and little points next to you. You might say a number or a letter next to a specific scripture. What those things are, footnotes or references that direct you to a specific place to help give you the understanding. But what you do is you just read it based on how you feel and don't ever look at those things. But we're going to go to it today. Come on, let's go to Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Yeah. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, uh -huh. that Christ shall be suffered. He has so fulfilled. So Christ, so the fact that Christ suffered, he fulfilled the things that the prophets wrote. Him suffering. Read it again. 
Verse 18, mm -hmm. but those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. So a prophet is somebody that tells you about the future before it happens. That's what a prophet does. They prophesy. They tell you about the future before it happens. Let's go to John chapter 19, verse 30. So when we say it is finished, we want to understand the clue that it's making. Come on. John chapter 19, verse 30. Yes. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. We can't forget the details of what it takes to finish it, though. We got to be mindful of what those details say, because finish is in reference to completing things with details. Let's go to John chapter 12, verse 41. John chapter 12, verse 41. Yeah. These things said Isaiah. These things said who? These things said Isaiah. Okay. When he saw his glory and spake of him. So again, they letting you know that Isaiah saw the things that Christ was going to go through before he went through it. He prophesied about what was going to happen to him. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53. Let's see what it means. Come on. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3. Now we want to look at the details when he said it is finished, what are the details of it? Come on. He is despised and rejected of men, uh -huh. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Mm. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Okay. He was despised and we esteem him not. Okay. Surely he has borne our griefs and carry our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, mm. smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded. For he was our, wounded. Go ahead. For our transgressions. Yep. He was bruised. He was bruised. For our iniquities. Mm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Okay. And with his stripes. And with his stripes. Again, Christ went through a beating. Let's go to it. Let's go to John chapter 19, verse 1. We're going to hold that. Hold that. We're going to come right back. Go to John chapter 19, verse 1. Again, what does it mean when it say it is finished? Come on. John chapter 19, verse 1. Yep. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And he did what to him? And scourged so him. So when we just read in Isaiah 53 that he was beaten and bruised and, and wounded, when did that happen? That's what was finished. Those are the things that was finished. The things that Isaiah, the prophet, because he a prophet, because he spoke about the things that were going to happen before they happened. He spoke about Christ before he was born. He spoke about Christ and the details of his life in reference to the prophecy and him fulfilling those things. Let's go back to Isaiah 53. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Yeah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm. That chastisement of our peace was upon him. Okay. And with his stripes, we are healed. Mm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Mm. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as the sheep before the shearers. And that's what happened to Christ. He was brought out there. He was slaughtered. Go ahead. And as the sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He didn't complain at all. Come on. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? And so what happened to Christ is that he was in prison. He was judged as, as the other men were and that, that had broke the law. He was judged the same way they were, but he didn't even do nothing. Come on. For he was cut off of the land of the living. Mm -hmm. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. Mm. And he made his grave with the wicked. He did what? And he made his grave with the wicked. Okay. And with the rich in his death. Mm. Because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. I want to stop at verse 10. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. These were the details required by the Lord. Go ahead. He has put him to grief. Mm. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Let's go back to John chapter 19 again. So we just read of the prophecy about Christ. And we're going back to John 19. Let's see what he fulfilled in those things. Let's see what he finished, the details of it. Come on, let's do verse 6, John 19 and 6. John chapter 19, verse 6. Yeah. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, crucify him. So the chief priests, they despised him like we just read in Isaiah 53. They rejected and despised him. Let's go to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. But they cried out, away with them, away with them, mm. crucify him. Pilate said unto them, shall I crucify your king? 
Then the chief priest answered, we have no king. So again, like we just read in Isaiah 53, they rejected Christ. I, the prophecy that was written by the prophet Isaiah was that they were going to reject him. Let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. When they crucified him and two others were with him. And what? And two others were with them. Like we just read again in Isaiah 53 when it says that he would be with those that were wicked, the sinners. He was with the sinners that we just read. Read it again. Where they crucified him and two others with them mm -hmm. on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And see that? So Christ was amidst those sinners. Let's jump to verse 28. Verse 28. Yeah. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Of what? Jesus what? That all things were now accomplished. So the things that Isaiah wrote about were now accomplished because the, the scripture said that he had to be rejected. He had to be scourged. He had to uh, be crucified with sinners. We just read that. He knew that all those things that Isaiah wrote about him were finished. Come on. That the scripture might be fulfilled the scripture would make reference to what not the book of john not the book of luke the old testament was the scripture that he would be making reference to which was the book of isaiah he knew those things was finished come on verse 29 uh -huh. now there was a set of vessel full of vinegar uh -huh. and they fill a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop uh -huh. and put it into his mouth when jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished. So it is finished. The it is finished does not make reference to not keeping the laws of God. It's making reference to the details required to finish something. Let's go to James chapter 2, verse 26. This is the one. This is the one that Christians avoid. But I need y'all to remember these scriptures. Mom, dad, uncle, cousin. If you're watching this, don't forget what the Bible say. Come on, James 2, 26. James chapter 2, verse 26. Yeah. For as the body without the spirit is dead... So faith without works is dead also. So faith without keeping the laws of God is dead. Yeah, you got to have faith on Christ 100%. Jesus is real. We 100% agree with you. But you still have to keep the laws of God. Let's prove it. Let's go to Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Again, the last book of the Bible. Come on. Revelations 14 and verse 12. Revelations chapter 14, verse 12. Yep. Here is the patience of the saints. Yep. Here are they that keep the commandments. Here are they that do what? That keep the commandments. That's who you should be. You should be they that keep the commandments. Go ahead. Of God uh -huh. and the faith of Jesus. So you have to have the faith also with the keeping of the commandments of God. You need both, Israel. You need both. Mom, if you're still in Christianity, Dad, if you're still in Christianity, you need both. You need Christ and you need the keeping of God's laws. So with that, Israel, what's finished now is your confusion. That's what's finished. With that, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.